All right, well today I'm going to show you how to fix the original Kindle Fire and its inability to charge. When you plug something in, it wasn't charging anymore. Now the first thing you should do before you do anything else is push and hold the power button for a good 10 seconds. Try this twice and see if it comes on. If not, it's probably the battery's not charging because this connector is no longer working. It seems that on the original, I've seen three already, that uh, it no longer charges. So, here's what you'll need. A steak knife that you don't like. And you go right in between the two speakers and you just put the knife in there. It isn't under warranty anymore, so you might as well try to save it. So, there are little locks in here and what I'm doing is just picking my way around. Use a finger to save your progress. It's good if it's, the steak knife isn't too sharp. So what we're looking for is an edge more than anything else. All right, all those locks are picked. That whole side is done. Oh, I lost my centerpiece. All right, so there we go. Now it's starting to open. Now this seems really brutal, but it isn't. There we go. There's your Kindle Fire. This large piece is your battery pack. Here's the main circuit board. Next thing you're going to want is a very small double-aught screwdriver. So zero, zero or less. Maybe triple zero. I guess when they numbered these things they weren't this small. so they. They had to come up with a zero and then, well, this is a double zero. What we're doing is removing these screws here and here to free up this circuit board. What I'm trying to do, of course, is get to the, this connector. This USB connector is on the bottom of this circuit board. So, I've just undone that. Pick that lock, it pops open. Similarly, we pick these locks. Lift up, lift up. This one's different. This one backs up. Back up, now it's loose. Okay, so I'm getting it working my way through. I got some other screws. One here, done. One here. One here, one way over here. All right, now we have some other little things we need to undo. Ooh, there's one more screw here. Let's get that one too. Here, I'm gonna put a magnet on the screwdriver so we can lift these things out. Lift them out. There we go. All right, we've got another thing to undo right here. This uh, gold color or copper colored picks up. Just picks right there. And then we have a little antenna, this little black wire. He's got a little gold mount. Hey, look what I found in the corner. Another screw. Let's go get him too. Okay, I think we're ready for this PCB to come up. That's a printed circuit board. And let's see. What's holding this little guy down? All right, now it's coming up. Now be careful of the connector, because if it is still connected, it's, there it is, there's my problem. This connector was no longer connected. It wasn't soldered into place very well. These little side bites weren't soldered into place. So now what I'm going to have to do is clean up these four traces. That's for USB 2. I'm going to have to put a little solder on these side posts and put this piece back into place. Now, what you're going to want for that is some solder, some flux, and a 15 watt grounded tip, grounded tip soldering iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply go to these traces, these four traces, and clean them up. 
make sure they have a little flux them, put a little bit of solder on them so that uh, they'll be ready to receive this. And then probably what I'm going to do is take these little side posts and I'm going to put them in first, solder them in, and then I'm going to re-stripe down and connect all of these. Alright, we're back. What I've done here is I've actually removed the PCB. You could disconnect this colorful wire by lifting this foam piece and there was one more connector. Simply remove it and now the board's free. So I'm going to try and zoom in on the board a bit. I just have to remember to leave it in this area. Okay. So now we have the connector and as you can see there's four little pins on it. One, two, three, and four. And those coincide to the four little traces that are on the uh, underside. Right next to the power connector. We're going to go through and clean these up. Now my soldering iron's all heated. So I just want to make sure. Let me go ahead and tell you in advance. I do not consider myself an expert solderer by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, my eyes are becoming a little bit older and seeing this little tiny stuff is really getting ridiculous. Alright, so I've cleaned up the traces a little bit. Gosh, it does seem like there's more than four, doesn't there? One, two, three, there's a fifth one. Curiously enough. Hey, what do you know? There's five here too. USB only needs four. Fifth one must be for uh, additional power. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. <laughs> We're going to connect all five of them. So I've got a little bit of solder, and this may or may not be the most perfect solder, but I'm using 6040. And it works. I've done a couple others. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll put a little bit of solder on these, on these legs, again front to back. I just want to make sure that when I finally do seat the legs that they'll have something to seat to. Now, you don't want solder in between the legs, but at this point we're just putting solder on. So that could happen. You just keep swiping them gently and patiently and uh, until they all clean up. Now what I do is I heat them up from the back, or the front, depending on how you look at this PCB, and I get that through hole to go through. Get it to seat nice and square over those five connections. Now once I get that to happen, you can drop the PCB for luck, sure. Then I just go to the five legs Touch them, let them heat, and then drag off. Touch them, let them heat, and drag off. Now, hopefully on some sort of microscopic level that made some difference. On any of the boards that I looked at. So this connector was extremely flimsy, but now the connector's back on. Unfortunately, there's no way for us to test this PCB the way that it is. We're going to have to put it back in this unit, power up, and see if we get a charge light on. I think it's going to work. Actually, let me show you how to put this back in. So we'll just go through it backwards. Alright, we're going to lift up this black felt. We're going to put this black connector back in right here. Hopefully you can see this. So these are little pressure fittings, and it just slides into place. Now we put the little black back, we route the cable the way that it came in. Now here's a tricky part. We're going to need to get this uh, PCB back in its spot without hurting that new connector. 
So we have to come in at an angle. Then without damaging anything, torque up on it. This is a bad idea of happening. Alright. Maybe this is the Kindle's default. Alright. Felt kind of good. Here. Now we lost the little connector down here. It's hiding. There she goes. So make sure we're not missing anything else. Alright. So. This one, no particular order. All right, well, here's the, the moment of truth. I have a connector. And let's plug it in. Look at that. We've got a green light. We're charging, which means we have a connection. Now, if I just let it sit, I'm going to bolt it all back together. We're going to let this uh, sit and gain a charge, and then we should be uh, playing again. All right, well, I just reseated all the cables and put the last two screws in and uh, rebooted it. Now you'll notice the digitizer works. We're up and going again. All right. Thanks for watching. 